This video will detail the structures of the humerus both from the anterior and posterior views. First here will be the anterior on the distal end. This articulates with the radius and ulna. This entire section I'm circling here. To look at details, this smooth surface is the capitellum right there that I've circled in a yellow. And this is the trochlea. It's a Latin term for pulley and it kind of looks like a pulley, that smooth surface. That will articulate with the ulna. The lateral epicondyle right there, that region is for muscle attachment. It does not articulate with anything. No epicondyles do. And here would be the other, the medial epicondyle, also for muscle attachment that I've circled there. And then to look at this fossa or indention, the coronoid fossa, there are, there are two of them on this anterior view and the other smaller one less noticeable is the radial fossa for the radial bone, whereas the previous fossa would, artic would allow the ulnar bone to uh, move into that area. And then this starts the diaphysis or the shaft of the bone. Long bones have a diaphysis or shaft. Now as I move the camera up this full-sized or life-sized humerus, here we're taking a look at the anterior view again but the proximal end. There it is. And to detail those structures, the smooth part here, the head, very smooth, And at the base of the head is a constriction, the neck, an anatomical neck that is the, that region there I've highlighted or encircled. Then the lesser tubercle. This will serve for muscle attachments. It's called lesser either because it's inferior to another one I'll show you or it's lesser in size than this second one I'm going to show you right here, which will be the greater tubercle. The greater tubercle there will be seen both in this anterior view and eventually in the posture of you farther into the video. Between the greater and lesser is this trough or trench called the intertubricular groove. They get encircled or highlighted. And laying the pointer in from this side in that same intertubricular groove. Again for muscle attachment. The, sur the surgical neck, this is the part of the humerus that tends to break and so surgery is needed here to reattach it and hold it together. And here's the diaphysis that's continuous with the distal end that I just had in the video. Now to turn this humerus around and to take a look at the posterior view on the proximal end, the part that articulates with the scapula. Here's the head again that articulates with the glenoid cavity or glenoid fossa of the scapula. And then at the base of the head and going all the way around it would be this anatomical neck that was viewed or that is viewed on both sides of the humerus on this proximal end. And then this bump over here, the greater tubercle, it is continuous with the other side that is on the anterior also. And the surgical neck, that again is a 360 or wraps around the bone there. A lot of surgery is done on that when you have a broken humerus. And then going down the diaphysis here to the distal portion of the posterior of the humerus to look at the relevant anatomy. First and most prevalent is this fossa here that I'm encircling, very single indention that tells you it's a posterior part. There's only one there. This is the trochlea again, the pulley shape that's continuous with the anterior. The posture of view here has no capitellum. That's seen only on the anterior, a key identifying point. And then to look at the epicondyles. Here's the lateral epicondyle here, again for muscle attachment, as it was on the anterior. And for the medial epicondyle also, this projection. You can feel these on yourself, by the way, at the corners of the elbow. Give it a try. 